Hello team and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at how to create dependent or cascading dropdowns in Excel, where the dropdown options of one list depend on your selections from the list that came before. I also want to mention there are a lot of different ways to accomplish this goal in Excel, but I wanted to share this option as setting it up can be a bit simpler than other options and a great way to start. First, we will look at the basics of how to create a dependent dropdown list for two levels with single words in the cells. I have a basic employee spreadsheet here, and I want to create a dropdown set so that when I select a manager, like Nancy in this case, and I go to the second dropdown list, only Nancy's employees appear in this list. I will begin by creating a dropdown for the manager names. In order to do this, you can highlight the manager names. You can use the name bar in the top left-hand corner in order to insert the name. You can also select Control plus F3 on your keyboard. But in this situation, I'll right-click and select Define Name. The name that we'll give this list is Managers. After clicking OK, I'll insert the drop-down where I want it on my form, so I'll use these three cells. I'll head up to the Data tab at the top, select Data Validation. In the Allow field, I'll select List. And then in the Source, I'll enter Equals Managers. Click OK. And now you can see my manager names populate in the cells in column B. In this case, I have three manager names with direct reports. So I need to create three more named ranges with the employee names. Here's an important key step. When creating the named range for Rudy and Tim, make sure you title the range with the exact text that'll appear in the manager dropdown, so Nancy in this case. In order to create this named range, I'll highlight Rudy and Tim. This time I'll use the name box up at the top, enter Nancy, and click enter. I'll complete the same steps for the other two sets, so for Steve and John, this will be titled Jess, and for Marcus and Emily, this range will be titled Ron. And now I'll highlight the cells where I'd like the second dropdown to appear. I'll go back up to Data Validation. For Allow, we'll select List. And in the Source field, we're going to enter a formula this time. We'll enter the formula equals indirect. Then in parentheses, I'll click the cell where the first manager name will appear. You can leave the dollar sign before the column B but remove the dollar sign before the number so that as we drag the formula down, it'll reference the correct cell beside it. Finish this with a close parentheses, click OK. Excel will give you this error message, but you can go ahead and click yes. The message is occurring because we don't yet have a value in the manager column. Now let's test our results. If I head back to manager and select Jess, when I go to the employee dropdown, you'll notice only Jess's employees appear for me as options. We can take this one level further and add the coworkers of these employees as a dependency dropdown list following the same steps. First, I'll take a moment to create the named ranges titled as the column headers, which are the employee names in this case, for all of the employee coworker sets. Now that I have the name ranges set up for my employee coworkers, I'll highlight the cells where I'd like to add those in. Go back to Data Validation. I'll allow a list. And like before, we're going to enter the indirect formula. The cell I'll click as the dependency will be column C, the employee names. Remove the dollar sign before the number. Close parentheses and click OK. Now let's test our results. For manager, this time I'll select Ron. For Ron's employees, I'll select Emily. And then in the coworkers drop down for Emily, you'll notice only Lewis and Kevin appear. Okay, team. Now let's check out how to handle multi word entries. Like the previous example, we're going to create a named range from the manager names as the column headers. This time I'll title the range multi. Then, like before, we're going to create named ranges for their employees. However, this time, the title for these ranges must be the first and last name with no spaces. For this one, I'll open the Define Name dialog box. For the name of this range, it'll be Nancy Jones. 
Click OK. Now let me complete the same step for the other two. For Steve and John, it'll be Jess Morgan. And for Emily and Marcus, it'll be Ron Smith. I'll enter the drop-down information for manager names by highlighting the cells where I'd like those to be, going to data validation, selecting list, and remember my source was titled multi. I'll click OK. Now for the employee names. I'll highlight the fields where I'd like those to be, go to data validation, select list, and this time we need to enter a formula that's a little bit different. We'll use equals indirect, substitute, then in parentheses we'll enter B3, enter a comma, and then quotation marks with a space in between, another comma, then two sets of quotation marks with no space. Two close parentheses to wrap up this formula. Our entry into the source field has the effect of matching up the manager name in the first dropdown by substituting it for the value without a space. Since that value will match the named ranges we created for employees, the linking will work. I'll click OK. Now when I select the manager name of Jess Morgan, only Jess's employees appear. Team, I hope you found these tips helpful. Please like and subscribe to the channel and leave comments about other tips you'd like to see covered.